Hi guys, Classic here, and being extremely hyped for Artifact, I thought I would look back at my old friend Hearthstone and compare the two. I usually don't like making too many comparisons because the two games are obviously different, but when a new game comes out, it's not in a vacuum, we have to take what's already present in consideration, what worked and what didn't. Hopefully this video will help you understand the differences between Blizzard's Behemoth and Valve's upcoming game. Here's the key differences with timestamps for your convenience. First we have gameplay differences, then collection differences, the business model, and finally a TLDW. Let's start with the massive differences in gameplay. First of all, Artifact plays on three lanes or in Hearthstone terms, three boards. Each lane has its own mana base, but you only have one hand for all three lanes. This concept alone brings decision making on a whole other level compared to Hearthstone. Managing resources and making sacrifices will be more prominent in Volvo's game. You will have to lose advantage in one lane if you want to focus on these two others. It's impossible to win all three lanes at once, therefore you will have to make strategic sacrifices. Now to some, this complexity sounds fantastic. But this will mean that the game will not be for everyone, it will not be as casual friendly as Hearthstone is. One of Hearthstone's biggest selling point is just how easy it is to get into the game. It's free to play, and it's fairly easy to understand you have only one hand, one board, and one thing to focus on, killing the enemy hero. In that rule alone, there's a major difference. In Artifact, you do not kill an enemy hero, in fact, you kill towers. And there's two ways to win a game. You either kill a tower in two separate lanes, or you kill the tower in one lane twice. Once the initial tower dies, a stronger one will happen, called the Ancient. Now, obviously I won't mention every single difference between Hearthstone and Artifact, because it would be way too long. It's two completely different games. But there's another key difference in gameplay that I want to touch on. Both games handle turns completely differently. In Hearthstone, when it's my turn, I can put as many cards as I want, as long as I have the mana to pay for it, obviously. I can also choose who I want to attack with my minions, and if I want to attack at all. Now in Artifact, it is a bit different. Let's say you're in lane 1. Instead of being able to play every card that I can with the mana that I have, whenever I play a card, I will pass priority, or in Artifact's terms, initiative, to my opponent. For example, I play one card, then I have to wait for an opponent to either pass or play a card of their own. I cannot, unless specified, play two cards in a row. Combat is also handled differently. Combat happens after both players agree to not play anything, therefore passing. Once both players have passed, it goes to combat phase. And everything smashes together at the same time. You will know what will attack what with the little arrows over your minions. Now this means that you have to be strategic about where you will deploy your heroes, where you will deploy your creeps, and the whole positioning aspect will be a bit more prominent in Artifact. Now the time limit for your action in Artifact is 15 seconds. This will create a kind of back and forth that will make the game go much faster. No more 90 seconds to wait for those rope turns. Now I also wanted to address how both games deal with their cards and their collection. In Hearthstone, you have 9 classes, each of them having their own class cards and access to the neutral card pools. A Paladin, for example, will never be able to put a Fireball in his own deck, because it's a mage spell. But both classes will be able to add Ragnaros into their deck, because Ragnaros is a neutral legendary minion. Now in Artifact, they split cards into 4 colors. Blue, Black, Red, and Green. Each color representing something different. And there's also a 5th category items which do not have any colors tied to them. This allows the player to decide what color they want their deck. Do they want it blue and black, blue and red, blue and green? What combinations do they want? It's kind of like having a dual class system in Hearthstone. It's kind of like if you could mix two classes together at your will. Now you have to remember, you can only play a spell of the color of which you have a hero deployed in that specific lane. Therefore, going for different colors might not be the best strategy. In my opinion, this adds a layer of depth with deck building. Because now, the players can make the choice. Alright, what do I want to build and what colors will help me create that deck in the best way possible? 
In Hearthstone, if you want to go Control Hunter, you will never have access to that Blizzard or that Flame Strike. It's just not possible unless you generate it with some random thing. In Artifact, if you want blue spells that will be tied to control but you also want to play some red heroes well you can do so just build your deck in function of blue and red and have blue and red heroes and then you will be able to go now once again it's a step of complexity that is added which for some might be really great but for others this might be a bit too much the thing that I like though is it's up to the players to know if they want to go monocolor which will be simpler or if they want to test and do two colors, a splash of only one color if you want a certain spell. I feel like we have a lot more flexibility. One last thing is Artifact has hero cards, kind of similar to Dota 2. Each deck is required to have five hero cards of the colors of your choice. And each hero has signature spells attached to them that you are forced to have in your deck. This leads to difficult choices. Maybe you want that hero specifically, but the signature card is really not what you want. Once again, that's added complexity. Now, like I mentioned a bit earlier, to cast a blue spell, I need a blue hero in my lane. This can lead to some frustration that are simply not present in Hearthstone. The only limit you have in Hearthstone is do you have the mana to cast it or not? Because once it's in your deck, you can cast it. This might be something that new players might have difficulties in Artifact, dealing with the fact that they'll have cards stuck in their hand. But if you're a Magic player, you probably are used to that because of the, the way lands works. Now regarding the business models, they could not be further apart. Let's get the obvious out of the way. Hearthstone is free to play and Artifact is pay to play, with no way to obtain cards for free. This is obviously a huge debate among consumers. You have the people that say, no, I really want it free to play, I don't want to be forced to pay. And then you have this other camp who's like, well, you know, I'd rather pay to have an optimal way to gain cards and I don't want to be locked behind the unnecessary grind. Hearthstone is obviously the free to play option and this is great for people that just want to try it out because you don't have to pay a single cent and you will be able to play the game for as long as you want. Now that sounds fantastic and to a certain degree it's pretty cool but don't be fooled. The fact that it's free to play simply means that instead of spending money as, as a resource to gain cards you will spend time. Now, to a teenager or a young adult that has a lot of free time but low income, well, you'll have a good value in Hearthstone if you just grind it out and you play arenas and you're not too focused on absolutely having all the best cards in the world, there's a lot of fun to be had. Now, for people with a full-time job or simply more responsibilities, being forced to grind is not necessarily a good thing. So a lot of people will turn to buying card packs to accelerate the rate of acquiring cards. Now I will spare you the math, but some people have calculated on Reddit the price per card on average between Hearthstone and Artifact. Now Artifact is not out yet, we don't know the tier 1 decks, we don't know the exact cost of the game yet. But acquiring the rarest rarity in Artifact will be easier than Hearthstone because you get one in every single pack. And also you get more cards per pack than Artifact. In this case I guess time will tell, but I have a strong feeling that to play on a competitive level, it's gonna be cheaper to be able to compete in Artifact, at least in terms of raw money. Now, like I said with Hearthstone, if you have infinite time, then you'll be able to grind your way and get some free packs that way. Another key difference is, is that card and artifacts are tradable. Instead of using a dust system like Hearthstone does, you will be able to sell your cards on the marketplace and get some funds that way, and you'll be able to buy single cards. I'm gonna give an example as if I would use a marketplace, but with Hearthstone examples just to convey the idea for the Hearthstone players. Let's say I have a Ragnaros that I do not want. Then I'll be able to sell it on the marketplace for an amount that the market will decide. We don't know yet, it's supply and demand, probably. So for example, let's say I sell my Ragnaros for $2, and that the card that I want, uh, let's take for example, Arcane Intellect, is 25 cents, then I'll be able to buy four arcane intellects and still have a dollar left. Now it's hard to say how the market's going to behave, but in my opinion that's probably going to be a better rate than what you would get with the dust system in Hearthstone, because let's not kid ourselves, they're not generous on the dust. Now like I said on a competitive standpoint, it's a bit too early for artifact, but I know for a fact for having played thousands of hours of Hearthstone and dumping several hundreds on the game, 
If you want to be competitive, you will either have to grind thousands of hours or spend hundreds of dollars. This is not something I like. A key reason why Rocket League is one of my favorite games ever is because you can buy the game and then nothing blocks you from being a pro except your skills. Now I have a strong feeling that artifacts going to be a bit more expensive than let's say those base game, but the principle remains the same. As soon as you spend an initial small amount of cash or medium amount that's entirely subjective, you will be able to compete and Gaben said that the more time you invest in that game, the better you will be and the skills that you have as a player should have a greater outcome on your win percentage compared to Hearthstone. Now obviously that's not all the differences, but I simply wanted to note the key differences for me that made me jump into the artifact ship. Because like some of you know, Hearthstone is one of my most played games ever. I really like that game and I will probably still play it. But when I saw Artifact announced and I read more and more and more about the game, it really resonates with me. I really like the added complexity, I like the layer that it's not free to play, therefore I won't have to grind hours and hours and hours to get simple cards. And I simply want to summarize all the differences right now for the people that don't want to watch the whole vid. To summarize, Hearthstone has a lower barrier to entry in terms of trying to game out. The game is free to play and the rules are much simpler, but this means that it comes at a cost. That means that you will not have as much depth as hard effect because inherently having three lanes to deal with with only one hand changes the whole way you need to think about how to win the game it becomes much closer to controlling like a huge battlefield and being the commander in chief and dealing with units now once again this complexity means that to play artifact you will need to be focused you will need to have that as your main game now, this might sound great for a lot of people, but personally, I kind of like Hearthstone being this mindless, quote unquote, I'm not saying there's no skills, but I can autopilot on Hearthstone and have Netflix on my other screen. And that's something that for me is extremely pleasant because I'm not trying to go pro. I simply want to play a game, smash some cards, having some flashy things, and that's something I really enjoy. Artifact, I will have to approach it differently because now it's... A game that you need focus, you need to make sure that you know what happens in the three lanes, what your opponents played, etc. I see Artifact as a game a bit closer to Magic, where deck building will be really important and I think great deck builders will have more ways to shine through Artifact. I feel like the game's gonna play out a bit like chess also, where you will have to make sacrifices in some places to gain an advantage at the other lane, but you, it's really hard to know if that was a valuable trade. In some cases, it's going to be very clear cut that you made a good decision, but in some other cases, it's going to be extremely nuanced, and sometimes you won't even know before four or five turns. In the end, I feel like it's two different games for two different audiences. We compare both because both are card games. I think both can live healthily in a different market. One will be a game that's going to be more focused in depth, and to some, it sounds way better but i know that it's not gonna be the case a lot of people approach me to say oh this artifact game it sounds interesting but it seems a bit too complex i don't know if i want to dive in or not and that might hurt the game eventually it's gonna be hard to tell to me it's actually a strong selling point i want to spend some hours in the game i'm at this point of my life where i need another game to invest thousands of hours in it now we still have a bit of time before Artifact releases, I want to know your thoughts. What do you think? Is the game better than the other? Will you play both? Where do you come from? I really want to know your thoughts. And until then, I hope you have a wonderful day.